So, hi guys. Um, I recorded a number of videos because this process takes days to complete. Um, so, I wanted to um, just kind of give a little brief overview um, of waxing and mounting watercolor on birch cradle boards. So, if you don't want to watch the entire video, which was recorded over many days, you can just quick watch this overview and then move on. Um, but I, I noticed that there weren't any really detailed um, descriptions of the process uh, available that I could find. So I thought I would do that for you. All right, so this is a painting that was done on 100% cotton. Um, and what I did was I bought a cradle board, which is made of birch and um, it's got a support and then about an eighth of an inch plywood on top. So then the cradle board comes unfinished. So you sand it before you use it when you, when you get it because the surface is a little bit rough. And then you finish it with a sealant, something uh, to seal the wood uh, because wood is acidic. So I found a special, I guess it's, plastic based acrylic based varnish sealant that um, I used and so usually that doesn't take too long to dry you could give it one or two coats depending so once you've prepped your board you take your paper you put it on you measure the precise measurements and then you cut off extra after it's been glued on and pressed it needs to be pressed under like a stack of heavy heavy books or a plant press or something and uh, don't put paper towel on top because the paper towel will make an imprint in your um, painting. So use a clean dry surface. Sometimes what I do is I use uh, tracing paper um, to make sure that the surface is clean. So once you've pressed it for 24 hours, then you need to take it up and let it dry in the air. So let it dry completely. I would say another day because um, you have to expose it to the air to get rid of all the moisture. So once it's pressed and thoroughly dried, uh, then you cut off the excess and then you can do the waxing. So I hope I'm not confusing you. In order to adhere the painting to the board, you can use a soft gel mat um, some people use a heavy gel. Um, anyway, these are just gel mediums from Golden. And, um, I think I like the heavy, heavy gel the best. But the idea is that you use something that's thick because you don't want too much moisture content. And the moisture content, um, is important because we're working with watercolor paper and we don't want to make it wet. We also need strength in that glue to hold it on there. All right, so you found a thick, heavy gel to glue it on. You then pressed it, you dried it. Then you're ready to uh, protect it with, after you cut off the excess and you sand the edges, uh, then you're ready to put some cold wax medium on. And here's some examples. This is Gamblin, and this is Doralyn's Cold Wax Medium. And uh, they're the same thing. So you just take a lint-free cloth and um, pick some up and rub it on, and I'm going to show you exactly how to do that. Using a circular motion, so you fill up all the divots in the paper. You then make sure that there's no ridges, um, and you... Let it dry for a full 24 hours in a warm, dry place. And then you buff it slightly with a lint-free cloth, uh, very slightly, and apply another coat. And again, let it sit and dry for at least 24 hours. Then buff one more time and another coat. So three coats of wax. And my reason for that is I used to do two, and then I had a problem with one painting where I felt that it wasn't sealed as well as it could have been. So now I do three layers. So this is at the end, we've got uh, three layers of wax on. And at some point I did paint the side. So I found 
that it's hard to get a nice perfect edge but I'm going to show you in the in the films how you can add a floating frame on top of your work so that this edge of the cradle board is not so important um, however uh, yeah I don't know it's just tricky because this uh, cotton paper has wax on it and so the paint doesn't want to adhere to it but I also found that if you painted the edges of your cradle board before you did this whole process then you would have problems because the glue gets stuck on the on the edges of the cradle board and you need to have a you know then then you wreck your paint job because you're trying to cut the glue off so anyway if you have any great ideas you can tell me so this one um i painted first and then i had to paint it over again anyway so really as far as i'm concerned that was a wasted effort it should just be done near the end but then you have to carefully seal your painting with you know paper and really good um, masking tape to make sure your paint doesn't get on your actual watercolor paper anyway those are just some thoughts these are two examples of paintings that are that are completed this way and then I do show you how to mount it and um, you should use a fresh blade on your exacto knife when you're cutting the um, the paper off. And one of the things that you can use to press the watercolor paper, you can use something like this to apply the the gel glue. And then you can use a brayer like this to push it on. And you can also make sure you don't get glue on top of your painting by covering up with some tracing paper in between the uh, brayer and the painting because I've already got glue on top of a painting and that was so sad. All right, so um, enjoy the video. Let me know if you have any input um, and if it was helpful, I'd appreciate a thumbs up and maybe a subscribe and um, Thanks for hanging out with me. I appreciate your time. Have a good day. Hi everybody. My birdies in the background are talking to you and I hope you can still hear me all right from my cell phone. I want to show you a cradled wood board. This is uh, made with birch plywood on the top and it's very firm. It's like, um, hmm. Well, it's like a canvas, only very stiff and firm. And so what I've done is I've sealed this board. You can tell it's a wee bit rough. Um, I've sanded it when it came out of the package. And now it's smooth enough that I can adhere a watercolor painting to it. Here's the watercolor painting. And what I did was I painted it too big for the 8x10 on purpose. So I can take my... Um, painting and lay it over top of my uh, work of, of sorry of my cradle board this is hard talking and doing stuff at the same time isn't it um okay so the paper I laid on top of the cradle board and I bent the paper down um, on the edges of the cradle board so that it's aligned where I want it to be so when we're done, this will be like a canvas, only firmer and ready to hang on the wall. So now what I've done is with those creases, I can take my um, painting and turn it upside down and find a pencil. Better, easier said than done. Okay. And so I can just go like this. So I can see these if light if well for some reason I sort of get lost and uh, then I'm going to apply some gel medium here it's heavy gel semi gloss uh, the finish doesn't really matter but the heavy gel means that it's a firm hold glue that will um, allow this watercolor paper to adhere to the board very well. If you use too thin of a glue, it will not 
um, be firm enough to hold that paper on. So um, I got a Mod Podge brayer to help with putting the painting on the cradle board. Um, the thing is, I was using a regular, like a baking, um, oh, rolling pin, but then I was squeezing too much glue out, and you have to have enough glue to make this stuff stick. So, having smeared this glue everywhere, paying special attention to the corners, because if there's not enough on the corner, then you have a problem. So, edges and corners, particularly corners, um, need to have quite a bit of glue. And you can just use your finger to make sure there's glue everywhere. And now I have to clean my hands off because if I touch the watercolor, I will wreck it. So some paper towel is a very handy thing, a very necessary thing. Okay, um, so without further ado, I'm going to take the cradle board, oops, and I have to make sure there's no glue on this surface either. It needs to be clean so that the watercolor painting is not covered in glue. And now I'm going to put the cradle board on. and line it up okay so it's now lined up it's on there as good as I can push it by hand and I'm gonna take this brayer and making sure your brayer is clean of course rub it over the surface Making sure that there's no air bubbles, but don't push too hard because then you'll push all the glue out. All right, so now this needs to be pressed for 24 to 48 hours in order for that glue to dry really well. And then after that, we can trim off the excess and protect it with uh, Dorland's wax medium. All right, so that's my quick little video I'll show you the rest of the process later. Thank you. Hi, this is Sarah. Here I am with um, a watercolor that I've attached to a cradle board. And after this has been pressed and dried for about 48 hours, you're ready to trim off any excess. So I have uh, an X-Acto knife here and you should probably break off a fresh one so that it's nice and sharp and uh, then have a cutting board in place cutting mat in place flip it over make sure everything's clean and dry <clears throat> and then cut off the excess paper so I'm just gonna um hmm well, that was funny. Okay, so you can't really see too much, but uh, here we go. Let's give this a try now. Might have to break off a blade. Give me a sec here. And put that somewhere safe. All right, now I'm just going to take the blade, line it up as best I can, try to go in a straight line and cut that paper off that we don't need. And you can go over it a few times. To get get an even cut and okay. 
Okay. Okay. So there we have cut off the pieces of the painting that we don't need. I'll take it out of the holder. And one thing that could be advisable is to paint the edges of your cradle board first if you want them painted. Um, but anyway, now you can sand those little edges carefully and then apply wax. So we'll come back in a bit. So we've got the edges sanded. And uh, now we have a lint-free cotton cloth, and we have our Dorland's wax medium here. Um, so it's a thick, cold wax, so you just grab some on your cloth and rub it into the painting. And... Uh, if you don't have enough on your rag, it will catch and sound scratchy. So, but it'll move like greased. I don't know. It'll be like it's greased if it's fully covered. So you have to kind of go in circular motions because you want to get that wax rubbed into the grain of the um, watercolor paper. You want to fill up the little holes. Their little divots in the watercolor paper and you just keep going around the entire painting until it's well and truly covered and you want to make sure the edges are as well because we don't want moisture getting into the painting through the edges different directions and when you feel a lot of resistance that might mean that you didn't get enough wax on Fold that rag over to a more dry area and I'm going to just rub over the edges to get any excess off and then again go in circular motions around the painting. thoroughly rubbing it <clears throat> and now let it dry for 24 hours before you proceed. Okay, so there we have it. One layer and you can kind of hold it to the side so you can see if there's any streaks. Um, Okay, and I'll let that dry. All right. Hi, good morning, it's Sarah, and here is that dragonfly on the birch cradle board um, with one coat of wax. So I'm just gonna try to show it to you. I'm doing this with one hand, it's a little bit hard. So you can see that it looks a little darker than the original painting and it sort of helps bring out the detail 
So um, now what it needs is another coat. So I've let this first coat dry for 48 hours. Um, 24 is usually plenty if your house is warm and dry. And uh, But I got sick, so therefore the delay. Um, all right, I'm going to try to prop you up here. Uh, oh, can't see much that way. Hmm. Well, I don't know how to do this. Hang on. Good morning, guys. This is Sarah Raymer Dean, and this is that dragonfly painting that I attached to a birch cradle board. And uh, now I'm just showing you the finishing of the process. It has one coat of the Dorland's cold wax medium on it. And it dried for 48 hours or more because I got sick. So um, since it's usually 24 hours is plenty for the first coat to dry in a warm, dry home. So um, now what we do is we just give it a little wipe with a lint-free cloth. Okay, and now we give it another coat. And we again let that dry. And um, I prefer not to buff it a lot because you can buff it and then get a sheen. Um, but my reason for putting the watercolor on a board is so that there isn't a sheen. I don't like trying to look through a glare on glass. So when, um, well, I live in an isolated place. It's hard to get inexpensive to get museum grade glass and framing. That's just not something that's possible here. Um, so if you want a watercolor painting to put on the wall and you want to be able to see it, or you can also prop these on a shelf when they're done. Um, anyway, it's ready. Where, whereas a piece of watercolor paper with a painting on it is very vulnerable unless it's protected, right? So, again, this doesn't provide UV protection. Still needs to be kept away from direct light but it protects it against moisture and damage from dust and fingerprints and that kind of thing. All right, so now we've got our second coat. We'll let that dry again, and we might end up doing a third coat just for good measure. All right? Hope this helps you. Good morning, everybody. Sarah here. So this is kind of my last installment on... Uh, creating a watercolor that's been painted on cotton and putting it on a birch cradle board. So I know my paint job didn't turn out beautiful on the sides, but you can also get little frames that go over top. The way I do this for painting the edges is after the paintings um, ready to go, then I attach a paper and uh, some tape and I thoroughly seal the painting then I paint it with acrylic on the edges so you could possibly touch these up but I find it difficult to get a precise fit um, then yeah so you know you really don't want the black painting on your artwork so you can see there's a little bit of a sheen on here I'm going to add one more layer of the Dorland's Wax Medium. So it wouldn't be necessary because there are two, but I have had a painting that I thought wasn't sealed as well as it could have been. So I would say three coats. Now, because you can see these lines, you realize that you want to try to work in a circular motion um, when you're applying the wax. And that will help prevent you from getting actual lines in the wax coating. But now this painting is ready to hang on the wall. And I might touch this up. I just don't want to damage the painting. Anyhow, so on the back, I know I didn't do this very well. Look, it's a bit crooked. But what I do is I measure the whole um, 
width and I mark the half point. So this is not quite inch, eight inches wide. So my center point is not quite four inches. And then I try to center my hanging mechanism. And then I nail that in because the nails aren't so thick that they'll go through the cradle board. Another option for hanging is to use this 3M Command brand, and there's some others out there. Basically, it's fancy Velcro type thing, but not that brand, that squeezes together. And um, then when you want to loosen it from the wall, you just pull on these this tab. So you peel back the sticky tape and put one side on you know each side of your painting and peel off the sticky tape when you're ready to put it on the wall. And that way you don't need any hardware for hanging it. Um, also, you know, you don't mark your walls. So, um, anyway, that is it. Basically, I will add one more coat of wax, let it dry another day, try to not have any lines, and then I won't buff it much because I don't want too much shine. If you buff a lot, you get a very shiny painting, which is really kind of what I'm trying to avoid, you know. So, just a slight buffing after it dries. Okay, have a good day. Here's a quick little addendum. I wanted to show you one that was already finished and that um, had a frame that you could attach. So you can finish the sides in acrylic with something that you like or that you feel complements your painting. Um, you do have to sand first if there's wax on it so that the paint will stick. So, um, but you can see that nice matte finish. That's what I'm going for. So then here you can get these floating frames and um, just set them on the painting. Um, and you can then attach it if it's something that you really want to do. So that really sets it off and the floating frames are usually not too expensive. Um, so that's a way to mount um, and then even frame a watercolor. All right.